Hey guys, okay, as promised, we are live at the yarn shop and we are going to <clears throat> warp a loom for you. Um, we are not the best weavers and we are very honest. We have never warped this loom before. Here we go. So the reason that we are okay, showing you, yeah. I know I'm getting it down, is because we want to demystify weaving because everybody gets scared of weaving because... I mean, because we've all bought a floor loom, a four harness floor loom, and they're or terrifying. Or an eight harness, and they're terrifying. This is not terrifying. See, it's a cute little loom. This is the Pre Kromsky Presto. We put it together yesterday. Danielle said it was super easy. Super easy build. Okay, so this is how, after you build, it looks. Build it. It looks like this. Yep. Okay, so to prep it for warping, I am going to take my stick and put it through the strings, your apron strings, yep. your back dowel. And then I'm going to take the little strings that it came with and they come, so they tell helpers. you to put a little knot in it. You fold it over, figure eight it, make a small circle. And that is for your, this is your warper helper for your back And what beam. this does is this holds it steady. A lot of our, we've had a couple of other tiny looms and they don't come with a warper helper. Oh my gosh, the warping is so much easier oh, than yeah. one of these. And then in your package, you get this really cool pattern and the yarn to go with it. And this is all hand dyed yarn by Donna at the at Kromsky America. She dyed it all for us. So you have a whole thing set up. So then you open it up and it has directions just like this. So we're going to literally work our way through. The these directions. directions. We already have the the loom clamped to this table. That is really important. Don't skip the <laughs> clamping. We have skipped clamping before, okay? If you have two people, you can skip clamping, and it's not a disaster, but it's still really hard. Um, clamp the loom. Next and these looms, really important instruction. Yep, okay. For this pattern is 80 inches from your back beam, which is, this is you, that's this right here, to your peg. I peg. only have a 60, you go from the side. Okay. 60 inch tape measure. This little piece goes in the middle of your beam. Okay. Okay, so I only have a 60 inch tape measure, so I'm just kind of like, okay, that arm can't move. Okay. Um, and then we need another 20 inches. Which is just about there. We're just a little bit off. We are 21 inches. We need to move it one inch. Two inches because you yeah. have to go to the behind of your peg. So we're going to move this forward. It's on the carpet on the backside. It has to be lifted up. It has oh, to come onto like, the carpet by two she, inches. She jammed it so that it wouldn't move. So it wouldn't move. Okay. So now we'll measure again. Okay. Because here's the thing. When you are weaving. Okay. I'm not moving. Boom, we're perfect. Okay. okay. You can go shorter, but you can't go longer or you yep. will run out of yarn. You will run out of yarn. So then the next thing we have learned, which this is a weaving hack from us. And if it's incorrect, we apologize. We put our, our peg up higher, slightly higher, slightly higher than the loom. Um, we happen to have these lovely shelves that we can do this on. But most people at your at, you'll have something at your house that you can do this. The reason is because it holds your yarn on there. You don't have your, your yarn popping will off. walk off the top. Right. So okay, so we have measured this, and we have placed. We're gonna place the yarn behind it. Behind it. We're supposed to have it on the floor, but we're we can work it through. We can throw it on the floor if we so want. Right. It shows it in a really nice bowl. It does. It like a yarn bowl. It's really pretty. Okay. A sheep squeezer would work really well. Okay. Yes. So then we're going to tie it. And you just tie it in a simple knot on your dowel rod. Knot. Okay. okay. The instructions on here is it is the sixth one in. Okay. So I'm going to count it using the handy tool that came with it. Mm -hmm. The heddle hook. Yeah, see, when you go through the, the just the in between the lines, you can use the fat part. 
But when you go through the holes, they have the skinny part. That's really cool. It's really cool. Okay, so I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Okay. And so now I'm going to take it. Oh, it's fat. And I am going to walk it out to my pig. Put it on there. Putting it on there. All right. So then we go from this, and we see this is loose now. We just go underneath, and she grabs it, and I take it for a walk. Yep. So, what we learned is your yarn tends to want to jump up off your peg as you're going along. Right. It because likes to do that because of spring and, I don't know, balance and movement. Mm-hmm. Things like that. Mm-hmm. So then we're going to do this until there are six slots left on the other left side. Left on the right. So there will be 28 loops or 56 strands of yarn. The really nice thing about their pattern here is it actually has all this written down. We're not just coming up with these numbers off the top of our head. No, we Which is how we do a lot of things. We did not make this up. We are right. really following the instructions Notice Heather had to take a moment and read them. Because I'm verifying. Verifying that I am not making up stuff. Yep. It's wrong. It's not wrong. I just it's it not wrong. It's, it. it felt wrong. It felt wrong. Yep. So we just continue to warp it. We have, this is the fourth time we have warped a loom in the past week we are doing so good here with our early new year's resolution of learn how to weave all the things and every time you do it it becomes a lot less terrifying um especially with the rigid heddles because there's not a lot that can go wrong and you can recover anything that you really do poorly or you know just like until you start cutting the strings you can it's fix still a lot. one piece yes one giant piece of yarn which means if I get all the way warped before I cut the strings and I go, you know, I just learned that Betty, who I'm making this scarf for, hates orange. I can take it off and I don't lose yarn. Right. Or in this case, she hated, I don't know, green or blue or the Seahawks. <laughs> the so Seahawks if you scarf. found out your new brother-in-law really hates Seahawks. It's a Raiders fan. Or a Broncos fan. Or a Broncos, there you go. That's normally what it is. Uh -huh, one of those two. There you go. <laughs> there you go. This would be the inappropriate yarn for that Christmas gift, which you have waited until the middle of December to warp on for. Right, because we have 17 scarves to, to get done before Christmas next week. Which we, you could mm -hmm. do that. You know, you really could. Because it's really fast. And when you get good at this, you can warp for two scarves. At one time. At one time and, and do all sorts of measuring tricks. There are mathematical calculators to determine how much yarn you need yep. for your warp and weft, depending upon the weave and the dent of your loom, which this mm -hmm. is an eight dent, correct? Yes. And... Yeah, it, it like maths it for you. And everybody, uh, everybody in the entire world goes, so I found this loom on Craigslist and I bought it. And it's this four harness floor loom and I can't believe they were only selling it for $75. All I had to do was come and pick it up. And I've been waiting to get a loom and I was going to get a little rigid handle, but this is such a better deal. And I got this one. I beg you, please don't make that mistake. Oh my gosh, they're terrifying. They, and... And they're hard, and half the time the pieces aren't there, or there's something wrong with them. And you really don't need a fancy loom to do most things. Most people are never going to use a fancy loom. If you get to that point where you need a fancy loom, that is awesome. Buy yourself one that has all of its parts. Right, then you buy a new loom, okay? There are certain things that you are better off buying new. Antique looms are kind of like antique spinning wheels. Some work. Some are amazing. Some are. 90% of them. You just unpopped my strings. I know, I just unpopped the strings. 90% of them 
are not working. I lucked out. Except you've never used your loom. I haven't okay, ever used let's, my loom. Let's be realistic here. You say you've lucked out, but you have no clue. Whether mine, or not, mine had a project on it at the time. She will never, ever use I'm not saying I'm going to use it. I am saying that... It is a status symbol. You know, they do work really well for certain things. They work really well for drying yarn. Taking up space in your basement. They, take, they work, look really good if you want it to be impressive that you have it. They're really fun if you put them upstairs or downstairs. Dalton, can you get it? Yeah, all of those things. Okay. Find the right spot? Yep. yep. Thank you. I've <laughs> never been in here before. Oh. <laughs> Hey, thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. Oh, sure. Oh, sweet. In case you wanted it. Very cool. Sure. Five, six. Two more. Two more. Okay. We ordered food from Oli Bob's, our neighbors. It's awesome. They brought it to us. Because they are rock stars. Yep. And they have the best French fries ever. And clearly, we need moral support when we weave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. All right. Okay. Scissors are back Scissors. there. Scissors. So then we cut. So now we are done with this part. So we're going to cut it off and we're going to tie it. That's always scary. Cutting the yarn. Yeah. I don't find that as scary as cutting the end ones. You might cut the project. <laughs> <laughs> she cut a project earlier. She cut the fabric. You just, you made a pocket, okay? <laughs> There's gonna, it, there's gonna be artistic element. embellishments that Did happen. Did you know on that. that any mistake that you make can be rectified if you have a wild imagination? All of them. And if the other person says, "Wow, there can be a pocket there, or a rabbit, or things," and look at what a cool bag it's going to be to the person who just wove it, who happens to be nine. <laughs> Tears. Okay, so okay. then I twist the stick because that's what I've learned works really well. When you twist something with strings on it, they tend to go really well. I'm making sure that the end of my stick is clear of your cog. Is that a cog? cog. It's not a really a cog. It's like um, it goes break. It goes click. The clicky break. Okay. There's teeth on it. This is why we're not great at this. This is why we make stuff up. We, um, but if we can do it, you can do it. That's what okay. The story. fancy instructions say I come down here. You come down here and you carefully remove it from the peg. Yeah. And now they have you do it the same way that you tie it in that a you knot. tie it in a knot. Yes. That it doesn't is, say to snip it yet. Yeah, and I've always broken it and tied it in a knot, but you could just tie it in the knot. That's fine. I'm tying it in a knot. Mm -hmm. Like it says, a loose knot. Yes. This is so it doesn't come flying off. Yep. Now, if you were doing this alone, you'd come over here and you'd grasp, grip it here. Actually, it's on this side. Right, but I'm just showing Because you, you want the knobs. You grab it on the side that the knobs. Right. But you would grip it and then you would be able to wheel it in. So why don't you go ahead and do that so they can see that you can do it alone. So we take off our ten magic tensioners. So then I have it. It goes click, 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 click on the little coggy thing. Mm -hmm. And over the back bar, I forgot to mention, you always want to make sure you're warping over, over the bars, over the bars because not under them. I've done that multiple times where I have warped underneath because it doesn't look okay. And then we need tissue paper, which Dalton, yes. can you bring me the yellow tissue paper that is on the table next to you? And they don't show that in here to have the tissue. Yes, they do. Do they? They don't show it in this picture. They use, they use warping sticks. They talk about it in the words. Yes, in the words. Okay. okay. But we use tissue paper, okay? And what this does is this keeps the warp separated. So we just run this underneath here, or you can use wrapping paper. Wrapping paper works the best. Right, or, but this is what we have Okay. right here in our hands. So then as she wraps, I'm just going to feed this in. And eventually it grabs it. Yep. And it just goes. Yep. And I'm I have constant light tension on my strings. So it's wrapping evenly. Right. Okay. So 
kind of like riding a horse. Shelly, it's like two warped people, okay? It's not... What? Yeah. She says two people warping. I says like two warped people. Two warped people. You can do this alone. I have warped plenty of looms alone. It is just easier to... If, you know, it's always easier to have an extra set of hands. Extra set of eyes to make sure that mm. you're not making a colossal disaster. Colossal. Colossal. Okay. Okay. I'm just, just going to keep going. Yeah, the tension bar is really nice. Th this is really, okay, we have another small loom. Okay, this is, this one is much better for multiple reasons. Um, yeah, would you like to bring it over here? Sure. We could show people. Sure, while we talk. Okay, yeah. so I got, it, it's it's tied here. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit farther with it. Okay, then in my instructions, my destructions. Yep, so now we're at this point, okay. So we've done all these steps. We're gonna take this and we're gonna keep wine and pressure until there's about 10 inches left. And we untie the knot. At the end. Yeah, you got a little ways to go yet. There's Not about 10 inches. Yep. Then it then, says I set scissor it. Yep, so this is always this is always my scary spot, brain. See, and I don't scissor at this point. I know, but that's what you technically do because then it's easier for a lot because a lot of times you won't wipe it all the way up. I'm just saying that's what yeah. That's what the instructions say to do. Yep. I'm doing what the instructions say to do. I always you know, we're really bad at following the instructions, and then we, we do it wrong, and then we have to learn why the instructions say to do something. <sighs> we're really good at that. She gave you an orange? That's nice of her. Okay. Can you hold that section? So she, she's just cut through all the ends. And I'm doing that on the other half here. Mm -hmm. See, I always cut it right when I take it off the warp beam, or warp peg. That would be easier, but I think the reason why they do that, then you don't have a bunch of uneven ends. Then yes. you go through and you break it into little sections. Yep. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna do it in sections of four. Since this is an eight harness, I like four as my tie off. Right, and we have found, this is the secret to getting your tension correct. Is we all are, we, um, we are um, very good at wanting to rush things. Fast. Fast, bigger, faster, stronger. So it's like, well, how? why do you have to have, this is something that we didn't know. Why do you have to have so many sections? That just seems stupid. Yep. So we are doing- Then you just have to tension so many sections. When, why, why not just have to, four? Right. No. no. You have this many sections, tension sections, because you can actually keep your tension correct. You tend to tie it better. So we do a tension per inch is what we have been doing. Right, and since this is an eight dent harness, harness, so four, eight, eight, I mean, uh, 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 eight, eight dent. dent, four, when they're through the four holes here, that's actually eight. Right. Because you were, I'll show you in just a second, we're going to go through all these little holes. Mm -hmm. That's eight. That's an inch. Yep. So four of them's an inch. And so then I tied all of them off in little knots. Right. Now... If it's like, I don't know, creeped up to be seven o'clock and the kids are going, God, I'm starving to death. Ah. You can walk away at this point. Yes. And you, you're, you are safe. Your loom will hang out with you and without you, it'll watch TV or something. Right. Looms are really good at watching TV. They are. Okay. So I'm going to take my front strings over the over bar. Over the bar. I put this through. And again, my long sticks, strings, strings, helpers. no, we, they go straight. This time. They go straight? Okay. They go straight. They so don't she actually got time to write, read the directions? They not crisscrossy. Okay. And then you tighten it up. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to try to make sure everything's like straight and even here. And so on and so forth. And I'm going to grab a stool real quick. Hello. How are you doing? Hi. Good. Good. So this is my question. Okay, so I got my stool. 
So I'm going to sit down here. Got my loom. This is a Kromsky stool. Yeah, this is a Kromsky spinning stool, which is conveniently very comfortable for weaving. Okay, I am going to take this, my first knot, which these are all loose knots. You know, we're not tying up wild animals. They don't have to be tight. So I'm going to take it apart because, you know, I only have four to worry about here. And I'm going to start with the first two. Pick up my stick. stick no, hook. she's got the little tiny end. I got my little tiny end. And I'm going to go through the hole. The first hole. And you just pick a side to go through. I pick this side. And I'm going to separate these. I pick the one closest to the side that I'm going through. I grab it. And I pull it through. Okay. There, I have my first one done. I like to lay it over to the side so it doesn't interfere. I pick up the next one and what do the instructions say? Oh, do I get to tie them off next? Let's see. Do they get to, do I get to do it the way I like to do it or do they have a different suggestion for us? Um, no, you, Tie them back in a knot, or do I? You tie them back in a knot over the, or it's important to use this knot, which is the knot we've been using. No, no, I'm, okay, because I, no, that's what I meant. Mm -hmm. if, I was wondering if it yeah. made us tie them back in a knot like no. that, mm -hmm. or I get to actually. You just tie them. Tie them, okay. Oh, no, you're fine. Just, you you're just on Facebook Live. Yeah, you say hi to everybody. We're working a loom high, <clears throat> high live, because, you know. Okay, so I'm going through doing all these things you want to show them the other loom and the differences that we yeah. have found so far okay so people are asking what the differences are and um, different looms that we have okay now this is a cricket loom this is a 10 inch cricket which is about the same size si well it is the same size technically it is the same footprint same footprint on this loom. Um, this is a loom that I've had for a long time. I do sell Shack products. This is one of ours um, that was mine before they actually remodeled it. So I just have to say that um, Crank is now on the outside, where this one is on the inside. So some of the differences that we really do like about the new Kromsky loom, for one thing, you have a huge amount of space behind your apron bar here. The, even though they are the same, they're the they same size. Really almost, oh, well, I can't lift this one. No, you can't lift this one. Because he's tied down. It is still. about, hang on, I'm going to turn you guys here. You okay. are about two inches. Lift them above so they can actually see the okay, difference. Hang on, let me bounce them out because I'm going to drop the phone. Okay. Okay, so see on the Presto how much space you have back here to work in? Yeah. Versus the Cricut. Versus the Cricut, you have no space back here. I will say this makes it much more difficult to get your paper in or your warping mm -hmm. sticks. Um, it really does make it more difficult. The other thing is when you're weaving, you're clear up here. That's just the park position, the park and weaving position. When we weave in this one, it's just up and down on this one area. It's the same place. Right. So your warp is more balanced. So I don't have to, once I'm warped, I don't have to lift it clear up here and then mm -hmm. over in front. It's the other thing that I like about this one is that you, about the Kromsky is the fact that this, even though it seems odd, this back, these back beams are angled. They are angled, which gives you again, more, more room. space, more room mm -hmm. to work. Right. Um, and it doesn't seem like much, but man, that space makes a world of difference. Just mm -hmm. a couple of inches because yep. you have to get your hands in there. Right. What the heck? I, we went through one section. Twice? Two, yeah. Well, we're just going to make that a we're design gonna, element. Sure. Yep. We could take it out too. We could, but we'd have to. Oh, then at the end it would come undone. Yep. I think you're better off just Good making... smarting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've done that before. I've done that before. You've done that before. Yeah. We went through the hole twice. 
this. Mm -hmm. Look at us warp badly. <laughs> on the live thing. Right, because you know, that's okay. We all have accidents. Yep, we do. And no matter what, but it's not you the can end always of the world. It. My my weaving's not going to be broken. Mm -mm. It's just going to be a little thicker. Right there. It's a design right. element. It's going to have a double stripe. It will. It'll right have there. a really thick stripe. Then I have these two, and I don't know if you can see, I'll have Heather show us in just a second when she's done helping our customer. He wants to make a simple hat. Okay. Okay, so just going along. I know it's kind of boring, and I'm not reading this. No accidents. Happy, happy happenings. It's not an accident. I'm kind of excited about that because now it's going to be like this fat stripe, and it's going to be cool. Um. So I'm just going along, separating these out. Pulling one through the little hole. This is the longest part of weaving. The rest of the time it goes really fast. So like we were saying, you could in theory have start all your Christmas scarves today and be done in time because it goes very fast very very fast like this worst case scenario could take you a couple of hours and but it's only an hour or so of weaving so if that scarves are fast so when i get these woven through mm -hmm. if you want to um hold it up so they can see the knot tying yes process on this next section and then we had our friend who asked us about the differences between the harp and the presto presto and we have the harp all freshly warped up this morning we're gonna go over a couple differences yeah so the biggest difference is what they come with Yes. First of all, the, the harp, and I'll show you guys actually while she's finishing those. Hang on here. I'm going to swing you around. Okay. I'm going to show you the harp. So this is the harp on a stand. This is the, the stand that Kromsky sells to go with it. Okay. Now a couple things we have been warping or weaving on this. 
This is a 16 inch heart. We did some cool things here. We, um, and this is one thing we haven't done on the other one yet and we will be doing, is we have marked all the inches on this uh, handle so we can actually see how everything lays out and we can make sure we're doing it. Now this one we just warped, like I say this morning. A couple differences, the harp comes with a warping board or, uh, built into the back. So if you want to do an indirect warp, you can. You can see it's got little legs that go through. Um, the harp also does fold up, it folds in half and you can keep your warp on there while you do that. Um, it does come, you can buy the stand and of course you can get the harp in an up to 32 inch width. Now when you have a loom, you automatically lose inches um, as you as you do warp. So always go there. One thing that I will say bigger is better. This 16 inch, we can easily do an up to 14 inch warp. If we were gonna do a 16 inch warp, it would be really tight. Um, and it actually doesn't even measure out quite to that degree. Um, I would like a 32 inch harp. With a 32 inch harp, I can do any number of things. Price point wise, they are about the same. An eight inch harp, I'm gonna show you again here, is 199, which is what the Kromsky, um, uh, or the a 10 inch um, Presto goes for. So an eight inch harp is the same as a 10 inch Presto. Um, the 16 inch is 279, 24 is 299, and then the 32 is 325. And then I have stand prices down here too. You can see those. Now, the Presto comes with everything you need. And if you're going to do scarves and bags and pillows, that is a great beginner um, loom. What is easier about the Presto is I think it's a little bit easier to understand. Um, a harp is not a heart, is not a difficult loom. And it does come with a warping helper. The way that they have this warping helper designed with the two strings, I think is easier. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have my next inch, I have split it in half, gone over my beam, and come out on the bottom on each side. That way, I can then just do an overhand knot, but not, a, not double knotting it. That is so I can go through and adjust my tension later. That's just to hold it for right now. And I will continue working across. Um, you want to show them the cool bag that the harp come, you can Where order for the harp? It's over here. It's over there? Okay. It's Thanks. over there. We kind of made a mess of the yarn shop. Kind of. Just we just kind of do that, okay? Okay, so this is the bag that you can order for the harp. It folds in half. Folds in half. It six, fits in this bag. Holds everything you need. This is the warping tension that the harp comes with. You can see it comes with all of your pegs for your warping. If you want to do an indirect warp, it comes with a peg and holder for your um, for your regular. It's a little shoulder bag, and it unzips, and everything fits inside. So if I want to take this loom to a class, to a class, or to the park, or to the beach. Or somewhere like that I can totally do that and it's super easy to take with me anywhere I want to go it also holds all of my extra stuff it's great for at the shop because we always know where all of the weaving things are for that wheel <laughs> loom, weaving loom for the looming thing yes we always know where everything is because it's always in the Kromsky bag and it even says Kromsky on the front now these little warping pegs if you buy a stand they fit in On the back here, they fit in down there and you can actually warp from there too, which is really cool. I really like the stand. I just got the stand. It has made weaving so much easier. Like no back fatigue. Yeah, like we've gotten so much more done than we ever did. Now the little um, Prestos, I will say, they fit perfectly on a TV tray. Yes, they do. And that is at the right height to weave. It is. So that's really nice too. And I like it because I can wrap my foot around them and 
and go to town on that. And they also fit in your lap. I you also want to, want to point out, do not underestimate the spinning stools. You're Holy right. Cow. Okay, so Heather and I both used to mock spinning stools. A like, lot. A lot. Like, why would you spend another hundred bu bucks on a spinning stool? Yep. Yeah, well. Heather and I needed some for a fiber event that wasn't Because be they're chairs. small. Right. And I was like, they look. take up no space. and Right, and we always have chairs. And at the fiber festivals, people steal your chairs all the time. They do. They come into your booth at nighttime, and they come and they steal your chairs. Mm -hmm. And then you come in in the morning, and you're like, where did my chairs go? And everybody's like, I don't know. Right. And then you can't find chairs, and you're trying to teach people to spin, and, and we you're have shuffling like, chairs. Right, and a lot of times we have six or eight wheels in the booth. And we have five or six people learning to spin at one time. Right. So we need a, extra chairs, and they take up too much room. They do. So, chairs take up a lot of room, and their legs stick out, and and yeah. they don't smush up against your wheels as so well as So I bought these the little tiny Kromsky spinning chairs. Stools. They are so Did you know that after a weekend of spinning, where are they at? There's one over there, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, after a weekend of spinning on the spinning stool, you're not fatigued. It's and amazing. did you see how she can sit here and get it for a second? We'll show them it because I don't know where the other one is. It's far away. Um, okay, look at how little it is. We can stick it underneath things. They make an end table. They do make an end table. <laughs> you can put two of them together. They make a round end table. Exactly. It's like the best You know, thing. they're perfect for a little house. They are if you have a tiny house. No, it's like they're the best things ever. Okay, so now she's got this all tied up. All tied up. She's going to take this off, and we're going to test the, the tension. I I have not <laughs> done this yet. I'm going to go across, and I'm going to feel them off. <laughs> this one's softer than the others. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to grab its two strings, and I'm going to pull them just slightly. And I'm going to come across. I'm going to feel all the strings all the way across. That one's tighter than everybody else on the end. So I'm going to tighten everybody slightly. my least favorite part because I always second guess myself. Yes, this is the... This one's tightest of all of them. You start on... Okay, so what you're supposed to do is start on one side and you test it. Test the next. Go through and you look for... This one's just loose, I think, still. For how everything feels. And then we've figured out that if we go then back through... And widen our finger out. We can feel we can them feel next the to difference. each other. Which I am sure there's a lot of books that have taught us that. that or if you took a weaving class, um, you know, we're spinners. Okay. This is. <clears throat> we make the yarn. We make the yarn. <coughs> we could probably even shorten the amount of spinners that a weaver needs to like two. We could probably keep one weaver in yarn because we spin fast like really machines okay we are machine spinners but weaving is our hardest thing we're pretty good okay so we're gonna think that we're there yep i think we're there that feels really so, tight yeah it's a little well no it's not Good. Okay, so now I'm going to go, I'm going to take my two ends, and I'm going to tie them off. Yep. So it's like double knot. That's what keeps it in place. Yay, we made a warp. We've so, warped our yarn, our loom. We've war we're warped. We are warped. Okay, so then we take scrap yarn. Yep. Which I need. You need scrap yarn? Is that what you're like... Scrap yarn like I'm a hospital person. Or scrap something. yarn! Scalpel! Okay, what scrap yarn are we doing? You know, we yeah. never are fully prepared for these type of things. I want to show you guys a little bit of how this works, okay? So I can fit him over to the end here. So basically, this is in the resting position. I'm grabbing a stick. Okay. She's taking a uh, uh, thingy. Stick. <laughs> stick. <laughs> that word just totally escaped me. A stick. <laughs> it's a, it's, <laughs> it's a thing. Right? So you weave it, then you do this roundy round. Figure eight. Figure eight thing on the end. 
of your of your shuttle. <laughs> shuttle. Like there a space wow. shuttle. That was hard. Okay, so this is it in the resting position. To move it up to the upper shed, you're there. <clears throat> Down, the you're there. Shed. I do like the fact that this has little rubbery feet. It does have a little rubbery feet. It does not want to scoot. No. So I'm That's just doing really a little fancy. bit of yarn on my yep. this shuttle. Is just, this is my ugly yarn. The ugly is, yarn is very important. We learned this. Uh, yes, this is the yarn that we warped it with is the yarn from Kromsky. The hand dyed. No, right, this one, and we will use that next. This, I will make another just, shuttle of that. This is just scrap yarn that we double over, and this is what we do to start our weaving so we make sure that we have, this is just waste yarn. The ugly yarn. <laughs> it's brown. It's brown. It's like, it's, it's yarn, okay? Okay, so I'm going to hold it, and then I'm going to make it long, and I'm going to come back. I do it this way because then I can just pull on one side and it all comes out right this is not the way the book shows but we're this is this, is, cat. this is my little this trick is, this is Heather. and then i didn't tamp it i just put it in there right. and then i'm gonna undo some more and i'm gonna go over and i'm just gonna kind of put it there and then i'm gonna come back you know shelly they even sent the yarn wound in a little ball which they i was did. really excited over it. with okay then i'm gonna tamp cake. it and then I'm going to go back down. Because, and it's, it is just really pretty. And I lightly tamped it because. You don't want it tight. Well, you can go tight here in a little bit. But your big thing right now is you want to get all of your strings spread out. Mm hmm Because they're all bunched up from going through the, um, from being tied. Right. Um. So, going there. And coming back, um, I like this little loom because I feel like I can make all the scarves without having to overbrain it. This was really um, painless to warp. Uh huh. I will say that this was very, very painless to warp. Um. I warped the cricket for Dalton last weekend. It ended up. It ended. There were tears, in some, and it wasn't Dalton. No, there was choice words, and it was not from Dalton. It was from the Dalton situation. Not really enjoying the situation, and um, yeah, there. Uh, so I told Dalton today that he needs to really look at the new looms. <laughs> well, Dalton's gonna weave the scarf for us. Yes, he is. As so, soon as as soon as we get this set up, Dalton, this wheel, this loom is getting handed over to Dalton. He just wove a bag on the cricket, and now he's going to weave a scarf on this guy. And, and he's going to tell us what he thinks thinks of them, because you know it's going to be very honest. Because Dalton is a very honest nine year old nine year old person. Okay, I had a little string over here flapping in the wind, so I, I had to deviate yeah. from my doubling it up mm -hmm. <clears throat> system but you are to go several inches yeah this is let's see if it says how much it, it is lots i don't know they said they sent scrap yarn i didn't see it in the package that does not mean it wasn't there right, because it's been a little hectic um Sometimes I'm just like, well, that's ugly yarn. And you throw it away? Maybe. When you kind of live in a yarn shop. Who knows? There were packages. Somebody may have gotten scrap yarn in their package with how that day was going. Right. Okay. Right. So. Yeah. I'm just kind of cruising along here. Um, I'm just so going to weave this out. Okay. The other really awesome thing about having this here is it ensures that when you cut your thingy off the loom your fabric off the loom scarf mm -hmm. item finished project you have a salvage down here uh-huh right and you have an edge for for fringe yes because we all a lot of us want fringe fringe is fun mm -hmm. so um i don't know the other 
people say four inches, something like that. Yeah, something like that. And we have Dalton over here wrapping, wrapping his shuttle. His shuttle. His shuttle. His space shuttle. See? Wow, the words are coming. And you know, it's been a really good Christmas season. So we are thinking about offering a, an online class. Mm -hmm. If you order, uh, we're going to have to figure out pricing and all of that good stuff. But like I say, the looms are $199 shipped to your door. Mm -hmm. If we offered an online how to weave class, which is stop laughing, we, in layman's terms, okay? Right. No which, which I would say you got to make sure your little ducks are put on right. I call these ducks. They're not really ducks. Right. But to me, they look like ducks. But we ducks. would have it literally where we would put the we could put the looms together on Facebook Live. We could help. do it as a team. Yeah. You would have somebody to hold your hand through it. The first, the first warping. If you have a problem, we would totally be like, hey, and if we did a few weeks, we probably could even do like a cl a plaid or a pattern mm -hmm. class. Okay, I'm totally cutting this off because that's really long. Yeah, because it's more than three inches. Right. That's that's definitely close it's to four. Close to four, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so if that's something that you're interested in. All right, I am going to advance this for Dalton. Mm -hmm. So to advance the work. You come back here. You take off your brake. And you take off your brake. That's the duck. <laughs> Everybody laughs as I call it a duck. And I let it go. And then I, and this duck will quack. Say it will be a very basic <laughs> class. As Danielle it's, calls it's, these ducks. It is. Okay, so then I'm going to pop that duck back over there. We will, we will call it something like weeding for, for spinners. <laughs> okay, so then it's, it's, that's probably all the tighter it needs to be. Let me feel, make sure you have a good shed still. It's a little looser than what we tensioned it. Maybe one more click. Yep, and then when you look that at That feels this, good. Okay, move it up again. Now at this point, you can actually look at your strings and you can see how decent of a job. Now, you're never going to be perfect. Okay, I'm sure there are a lot of people who are perfect. We are not going to be perfect. And that's but your bottom I shed. I can see that these are pretty close, close to it all. They are, there's nothing that's, a, because by now I have gotten enough um, weft on my loom that I can see actually how it goes. Mm -hmm. We are never going to be able to put this on the Kromsky page. They're going to laugh hysterically at us. They this can is... laugh. Look at it. It's, Look at, it's so, so pretty. Perfect. Look at our art. There was two artistic details. See, <laughs> there's, there's one two. there. Wow. Yeah, and one there. Well, it matches. But, you know, they match, and it's like it's artistically planned right there. Look, they're even the same color right now. <laughs> they are. Look at that. It's like we planned it. It's so it. pretty. So, so pretty. That would you be, know, um, we're not the only ones who are going to do this. No, no. Dalton, you want to switch sides with your figure eight? There you go. So, yep, you can flip it out. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Let's do that. All right, so we are going to head this off. And so Dalton, Dalton will take pictures of the finished product when yep. he's done. All right, you guys have fun. Or do you, unless you want to weave live on Facebook Live, Dalton. No. You, you want to weave live. Okay, well, let's cut that off then. Your shed can be a little, or your, it can be a little uneven. We can practice joining it later. Yeah. All right. Okay. So you come over there. Oops. There you go. Stool and all. Okay. All right. So Dalton, say hi to everybody. Introduce yourself. Hi, my name's Dalton. Dalton, how old are you? Nine. Okay. All right. So you're going to weave on the new loom. Mm -hmm. The new Presto loom. And mind you, he just finished a... So it goes... It goes in and yes. then leave the tail hanging out. Yeah. So. Leave yourself a good long tail. Now, why yeah. are you leaving a tail, Daniel? Well, because you have to tie it off in the end. Yep, so you're leaving your space, self space to tie it. Yep. Okay. 
you know I have totally forgotten how to do like a figure eight. I mean I haven't, but you know how you like have that brain freezing moment. We're gonna send you to back to Nitty Naughty <laughs> School. <laughs> because that is exactly what this is like <laughs> is Nitty Naughty School. Evidently, you know, now that I have magical things, I don't need the capability of that. Nope. I like it. I like it a lot better. Why do you like it better so far? Because this is lighter and you don't have to go like all of the crazy spots like the cricket. Mm. Mom didn't talk like a pirate during warping either. <laughs> You know, talking like a pirate's never an underrated thing, right? Oh, darn. Yeah, so Dalton is just doing a basic weave. A shuttle. <laughs> space shuttle, Shelly. <laughs> Goes to the space moon. Shuttle. We can now remember that if we call them space shuttles. We have to use memory tricks. We do. You know how many things we have going on in our lives, people? This is not just like little tiny things. Like, people literally say, when did you do that? And I'm like, time goes so fast, I have no idea. I know you guys think that we just, like, hang you out. You know, if we actually did a rundown of everything that we did in the last year. In the last week. <sighs> no, I think yours is kind of more fun, you know. Did you know we, like, it's not even been a year since we did our mad dash down to Bakersfield, California and filled the trailer for the I know. Did you know that it's, yeah, it's a lot. This year has been a lot, a lot of fun. We should do that, like, on New Year's Day. We should do, like, a reminiscing party. We should. Like, be like, so last year, we did. We should, or, or we make goals. How can we make 2019 crazier than 2018? No. No, don't put that out there because, no, no, that goes around in the middle now. Yeah, okay, because there's an empty spot in the middle and you can go around in the middle. You yeah. have to show them. Okay, after you do figure eights on both sides, okay. you can then go around in the middle and it keeps your shuttle flatter. Yes, that's why you do figure eights on both sides. And you don't overload your shuttles, people. The other thing that I learned from the interwebs. Okay. <laughs> One of the, the rigid, no, four harness, no, rigid hell group. I have so many looming groups now. Did you know if you have, you are short shuttles and you have a multicolor project, did you know you can figure eight two different colors on one shuttle? Mm -hmm. I've done that. I have never done that because I'm not, you know, yeah, I did that for something. I wove a lot when I lived in the Midwest. I actually, when I got the little cricket, I went through a period of weaving a lot. Well, that's because you lived in the frozen, frozen tundra. Frozen tundra, and it was like a self-preservation thing. And did you know you can get maybe two scarves a day if you knit really fast. You can get like 16 scarves done in a day if you really have to, if you're weaving. You know, like for a while I was really into it, and then I like, um, actually I think my loom got put away. Like, in when I moved, I just didn't take it out for a long time. Well, I don't blame you. I bet you you can fit the rest of that on that. I think it'd be too fat. I'm going to cut it off. And then that it actually has a really big shed. It does, but oh. but it makes it, you, you're more likely to get stuck in your right. thingies. See, it's not super fat. Right. Um... So that it goes through, because you go through like this. And if it's too fat, it gets hung up on the shed. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We err on the side of caution. You course. can always add more. Oh, well, that's looking very pretty, Dalton. Now, Dalton, let's see here. We're going to get up close, oops, up close to Dalton here. I'm going to show you guys. Help you out. So that's how it's looking. I'm actually gonna go. Can we? Can you get around him so we can see on the other side? Mm -hmm. Show from up above. It's like the aerial view. Right. So now he's making sure not to over. Three times in five months. Wow, Shelly. Huh. I don't know what you're talking about. I saw nothing in three times in five months. Um. 
that was only three of the four major event, four, five, six. six major events that we do a year. One of them was canceled last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're staring down the, the barrel of our first major event, February. Um, we run a rabbit show locally. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be great. It's a luau. Shelly, you should fly out. Or just load everything into a truck and trailer and just move out here. Because that beats five, that beats moving, you know, flying out here five times uh -huh. in three months. Because that's how we can yeah, make man. the next year better, right, Shelly? And then we're going to, and then we have, so we have the luau. Then we're going to have like fiber shows. All of them. Is there one before Black Sheep? At least West one. Coast Classics before Black Sheep. West Coast Classics before Black Sheep, but I think that um, there's at least one fire show before Black Sheep. If we do the Puyallup Fair. Oh, uh, Puyallup Fair. Spring Fair. He's trying to make sure his salvages stay nice and, and even. Shelly, flying's fun. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. Flying is fun. <laughs> Oh my gosh! So on the way back, f back from Massachusetts, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. isn't that when you watched Ferdinand the Bull? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so Dalton's watching Ferdinand the Bull. We didn't rent anything. We didn't rent a movie because we had rabbit judges sitting in front of us that we decided it'd be more fun to heckle them. Which they then promptly fell asleep. They pretended to sleep. They ignored us. They but put earphones they, on, they put headphones on and totally like ignored us. So oh Shelly has a list for us. I can't amazing? see it. If I say see more, it says a bunch of other stuff. Um so Oaks Park Oaks Park is up in the air if the Angora Club will be there because they're 4-H club was unfunded, defunded, disappeared, financially gone. gone. So there is no longer a county fair at Oaks Park on Memorial Day weekend. So we don't know whether we're there. We still. don't know if we're still there or not. We um we have not made the contacts on that yet because that seems like it's before the next show. Which is not a good way to operate. So, guys, any last questions? You can see this how fast this is going. Look how quick Dalton's going. So, Dalton, what do you think of this loom now that you've gotten a good section woven? I like it. You like it? Yeah, I like it. Oh, you're, he's going to advance it. He's going to tell us what he thinks of making it advance that's probably good enough all right there we go do you like it, Dalton? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a pretty scarf, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's very Seahawksy. It's very Seahawks. It's very funny. That's the one that I opened. That's I really so want to know what other color came in the other one because there's multiple colors. <gasps> and we have one now in the Now I want to open them all. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we only have one other one. <gasps> Can we open it now? Oh, why not? Sure, show them what okay, looks like okay. in the box. Okay, so we're going in here. It might be the same yard, you know? Okay, I'm going to grab scissors. See, it's down there on the floor. Okay. It's heavy. Okay. Where's the... I got to find it. Oh, there's... And there's the sticker. So, here we go. I'm cutting the sticker. Oh, it says rotate your phone. Because I'm up. Okay, thank you. 
There we go. All right, so here we are opening the other loom because we want to see the colors. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Ooh! So, if you totally dig this color, this is the loom for you. It's here for you. That's the one we have in stock, or we can ship them anywhere in the company, country. And, the, and then you don't even know what color you are going to get. Magic thing. It's like a prize. It is. All okay. right, so thank you guys, and we'll see you later. We'll show you the finished scarf when we get it done. Bye.